Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be returning to China today, looking at all the events going on with China in terms of their economy and lockdowns, housing market, stock market. The main point I want to make is that number one, companies are panicking, and I'll show you an article in a moment. But it's not just companies; people, the general public, are not panicking yet, but they are going to start to panic. And this is why I've been saying to you to get ahead of the curve. Make sure you've got your food stocked up. Make sure you've got whatever products that you normally use on a day by day basis. Here's an example: I brush my teeth. I use toothpaste. You know, most people do. Why would I just go out and buy one tube of toothpaste at a time when I know these prices are going up and up and up and up and up? And that's just toothpaste, which isn't going to be as uh, as badly affected by inflation as things like food. So don't you think I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy a few bags of pasta? Don't you think I'm going to buy a, you know a big bag of flour and then seal that so that I can use it over the next year or two? Since I make bread every day anyway, and we're already starting to see the impacts of the lockdowns in China, Shanghai in particular. All of the ships. I'll show you that image in a, in a moment. We're seeing all of this hitting the West. It is hitting the West now, and we haven't even seen all the inflation. All of these bottlenecks. Remember, I've talked about these bottlenecks that we're having. When you have these bottlenecks, it's、uh, again every time go back to supply and demand. When you have less supply coming in, but you have the same amount of demand or even a higher demand at times, this puts pressure onto pricing. And when you have、uh, pressure being put on pricing, people cut out discretionary spending. That's actually another interesting point. So many people said, Neil. People aren't cancelling their Netflix like you said because you know Netflix has gone woke and Disney's gone woke. They're just doing it because they've run out of money. Correct. I, I agree with that to an extent. A lot of people are cancelling subscriptions and all sorts of other things. It's called discretionary spending, simply because they are being that their budget is being cut down. Let's say you had a hundred currency units, half of it went towards. Housing and food and energy, etc. The other half was discretionary. So you went out and, you know, maybe you go to the movies, maybe you go and do some hobbies, maybe you go to a restaurant. Okay, so you had that discretionary spending. Well, as these areas here, so you've got your food going up, you've got energy going up, housing going up in terms of rents and and the like, and now we have mortgage payments going up. This squeezes out. So instead of having fifty of these currency units and fifty here. You've now got, let's say, eighty coming across, meaning you've only got twenty here. So you have to cut out other things. So we've sort of given this example before, but what are you going to cut out then? Are you going to cut out your normal everyday food items that you eat or consume every single day? Probably not. You're not going to cut out those needs. You you might sort of change products and have a, a lower product, but you're more likely to cut out your wants. So you might not go for that ten dollar. Unicorn frappuccino with the gold sprinkles and all that sort of stuff. If you remember, I I talked about that before. But that's more the younger generation, not the older generation. But you are going to see this, and you watching right now, you've probably started to cut back on certain things that you don't necessarily need right now. So this is what we're seeing. We are seeing all of these lockdowns in China creating bottlenecks, and this is why companies are panicking. Let's go to the first article. Actually, companies are beginning to panic. Experts say China's lockdowns will make inflation and supply chain nightmare even worse. So frustrations rising over food shortages, people being locked down in their homes for weeks, and a policy of killing pet dogs suspected of being infected with COVID. Yeah, okay, I smell something there. Let me tell you. I mean, my dog passed away a couple years back, but if someone tried to take my dog and kill my dog,、uh, yeah, I don't think that would、uh, happen really. Okay, a supply chain nightmare. This is what we're looking at. One in five container ships is now stuck at ports worldwide, with thirty percent of the backlog coming from China. And we've got this chap here, Victor Mayer, who's the COO of Risk Intelligence Provider Supply Wisdom, saying it will take months for supply chains to return to normal, as he expects U.S. ports could begin experiencing disruptions soon. Problems at port mean rising costs for companies and increasing inflation for U.S. consumers. 
Again, we've got Bank of America analysts saying the same thing, supply shock for the global economy. And this is an interesting statistic here. Transportation costs make up 7.7% of global GDP, which means delays at ports typically lead to rising inflation. And you remember we covered this statistic last year with shipping containers going up from just under $6,000 to almost $16,000 today. Okay, and then we have this, China accounts for 18% of all the goods the US imports, according to Bank of America. And for computers and electronics, that number rises to 35%. Now, just remember, China is the largest exporter on the planet. The United States is the largest importer on the planet. How do you think this is going to affect goods and services and inflation in the United States. Of course, it's going to affect other Western nations as well. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm just saying this is going to hit the United States. Here's another article saying that it's probably going to be worse than Wuhan and that lockdowns will once again cripple global supply chains. Where did some of this inflation come from in the first place? It came from the supply chains as well as the expanding of the currency supply. Now you look at this that I've highlighted here, at least 373 million people in cities, this is key, in cities that represent roughly 40% of China's GDP have been affected by the most recent wave of lockdowns across China. So why am I saying that this 373 million people is important? Well, if you are a Chinese worker and you're living in a city, then you're probably responsible for somewhere or another for goods that are leaving China in these ports. So you just think how many items one worker can produce per day. And then you look at this 373 million people here. This is obviously going to affect production. We also have all the supply issues. So trucks are struggling to unload cargo due to strict permit regulations, so bureaucracy, causing shipping containers to stack up. Here's an interesting stat. So in 2020 alone, the US imported roughly $435 billion worth of goods from Chinese cities and sent another $125 billion to the country in exports. So the US imported 435 and exported 125. That is a huge trade gap. And of course, once these lockdowns end, there's going to be an overwhelming movement of goods that is going to cripple the supply chains because they simply won't be able to handle it. The Economist added that they believe the Chinese government is unlikely to adjust its current policy anytime soon, even if officials are working to reduce transport blockages and production disruptions, meaning supply chain chaos is likely to continue in the near term. And I would tend to agree with that statement. You see, China's not like the USA. It's very different cultures. With the zero COVID policy, I think they're going to pretty much stick to this. And the economy in China is fairly strong as well. They know they have all the factories. They know they have all the workers. And they know that they are in a, a position of strength here. And do they really care if American consumers can't get some of their goods on time? Not really. I could be wrong in that thought, but personally, I don't really think they, they care that much. And you've probably seen this image doing the rounds this week. So this is crazy. This is how many vessels are waiting to enter the port of Shanghai. Uh, so this comment here says, raising interest rates will not solve this problem. And again, I would agree with this. Rising interest rates is not going to solve supply chain bottlenecks which lead to inflation because you've got to understand that is what some of the inflation is being caused by. It is the supply chain bottlenecks. It is the supply and demand curve. But, but yes, it is important to raise interest rates. Contrarian view, I know most people don't want interest rates to go up because they know that when interest rates go up, this will cause asset prices to come down. But this bubble that is just expanding, 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 it can only go on for so long before it pops and it will pop, ladies and gentlemen. This asset bubble in the stock market and the housing market will pop. It's only a matter of time. It's a certainty, in fact, an absolute certainty that it will pop. If we look at the Shanghai Stock Exchange here, you can see that we're already 50% down 
from the all time high, which was October 2007. Now we had another little peak here in 2015, May of 2015, uh, just under 4,700. But now we are down at just under 3,000. But China's no different to other Western nations. They have been creating new currency. They do hold US treasuries. So even with all the currency creation, China, the stock market right now is down. You can see it's down from where it was at 3,600 and now it's just over 2,900, just under 3,000. And it's very similar with the real estate market in China. We talked about that. If you haven't watched that video, watch it on the, the channel here. But we talked about the, you know, this implosion that's just waiting to happen in the Chinese real estate market. Now, They've been doing very, very well at containing it, at containing the sort of panic there and holding things up. But again, there's only so far you can go to just hold up all of this debt and sort of calm the people and calm the markets. Eventually, all of this will implode and it will affect the West. What happens now due to globalization is that if something bad happens in China or to their economy and their economy slows, it's going to affect the West. We've also talked as well about China and how they're working very closely with Russia. So this was uh, last week's article, China Union Pay, Russia's Potential Payments Backstop. So we know that China and Russia are very closely partnered right now. But then this is another point I wanted to show you in terms of the military conflict we, we kind of talked about. Well, it's not military conflict yet, it's more political. But the US issues a vague warning to respond if China builds military base in the Solomons. Solomon Islands tells Japan it will not allow China military bases. But let me just show you this article then. So China dismisses speculation about plans for Solomon Islands military base. So this is their response. They've saying, no, we're not going to be building a military base there. Uh, Beijing has dismissed speculation. It intends to build a military base on the Solomon Islands after signing a security agreement with the Pacific nation. The so-called Chinese military base in Solomon Islands is completely fabricated with disinformation by a few people with ulterior motives. Chinese warships could stop in Solomon Islands for logistical replenishment and that China could send police and armed forces there to assist in maintaining, interesting word, social order. Solomon Islands Prime Minister has insisted no Chinese military bases would be built in his country. Mr Wang's comments came after Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison said on Sunday that China's recent security deal with a South Pacific country was a shared concern of regional nations and Beijing building a military base there was a red line for Australia. Hmm. The United States has urged Solomon Islands not to allow a Chinese military base in the country, warning it would respond accordingly to any steps in that direction. Now, this is an interesting one then. So just after we see that, China slams provocative sale of US warship through the Taiwan Strait. So this article's just come out. China has said that such moves deliberately impair regional peace and stability. The US Navy has, has said that they conducted a routine Taiwan Strait transit. Chinese Defense Minister said it was a show of force and sent the wrong signal to the Taiwan independence forces and seriously endangered peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait area. Now let me scroll up a bit here because I want to show you something interesting. This actually came out, not this week, but it came out on the 30th of December 2020. So a lot of people are reading all these articles here and thinking this is new news, but because here we have 27th of April 2022, which is today, but actually this has been going on for a long time. So I've seen it all over different streams this week, people talking about this. Oh, you know, US putting the warship through, you know, Taiwan Strait and all this. No, th they've been doing this every month for ever, basically. This has been going on for a long, long time. This is just a normal, uh, you know, US maneuver, military maneuver. Uh, but yes, it is a show of strength. It's a show of force. Who isn't doing that? This is what nations do. They, they do these show of force. So I will come back to this topic. I want to look in more detail at the Chinese stock market, the housing market, and just to get an assessment of where it is right now and what those knock-on effects could be 
to the Western stock markets, housing markets, but more importantly, the economy. But for now, we've ascertained that the lockdowns will affect the West in terms of more inflation. So if you were thinking of going out and buying certain items that you use every day anyway, and those items come from China, I would say probably now is the time to go out and buy those items. The prices are only going to go up. They are not going to go down. And if you use them anyway, why not? All right. Thanks for watching today. Take care. God bless. See you tomorrow.